I'm messaging you for like an hour. So the top two reasons people give for not switching off an iOS device, iMessage and FaceTime. So far, it hasn't been too painful, but as you can see by those two examples, there's the odd one that trickles in. Today, we're gonna talk about how to combat iMessage and FaceTime withdrawal. Hey guys, welcome back to another Your Tech Report video. This is probably gonna be part three or maybe part four of this series of me jumping ship from iOS over to an Android device. If you're just catching up, check out the other videos I've done in the series. It's probably been one or two, well, if this is three or four, I've done one, two, or three videos so far. This all started back at a press event when Huawei introduced me to the P30 Pro. Great phone. We're kind of doing a little review as we go through this whole process. So far, you've seen the photo evidence, the video evidence, the fast charging evidence, the high capacity battery evidence. But now we're gonna kind of talk more about the Android experience itself because iOS is great in terms of its ease of use. You dive right into it. I mean, kids even three or four years old can get the hang of it pretty quickly. When you go to an Android device, every different manufacturer will have their own skin. They'll have their own launcher. These are some buzzwords you may not be aware of if you've never really ticked the jump into an Android phone. The launcher is really the way in which you interact with the user interface. It's, you have an app tray, so you can see all the apps on the device. It's, it's basically your home screen, like on an iOS device. The theme is how those icons look, how the interface looks, what happens on your lock screen, how notifications appear, et cetera, et cetera, and how you interact with these devices. So on the Huawei phone, they have their own branded kind of UI experience, which is actually, it's born out of iOS. It takes a lot of cues from iOS. So if you're switching from an Apple device to an Android device, this launcher and this theme is actually the most user-friendly that you can possibly experience. There actually are even launchers and themes that are completely ripped off of iOS. So if you really just want to use new hardware and take advantage of all the benefits that you have there in Android, you can actually make it seem like it's an iPhone. But at the end of the day, things like iMessage and FaceTime are always gonna be, or hopefully one day might not be, proprietary to the Apple devices. So. What's the first thing that happened? The first thing that happened is people who I was having conversations with before um, were trying to text me and they were getting errors that I wasn't available, especially when they texted to my phone number. You see, the way FaceTime and iMessage work is that you choose where the message string starts from. So on an iPhone, you'll see that you can change where your messages come from, whether it be your email address or your phone number. If you set it to originate from your phone number and you've now removed your SIM card from your iPhone and you've put it into your Android device, instantaneously people are going to try to text or iMessage to that phone number and they're going to get an error saying it can't be delivered. They'll be then forced to send you a text message, in which case you'll be able to pick up that conversation where it was left off. If you chose to originate emails or messages from your email address and people are corresponding with your email address, this could cause some confusion because if you've got a Mac computer or if you've got an iPad that are still signed in and still associated with that iMessage account, people are going to be sending messages messages to your iPad or your computer and you may not get those messages. And then you'll end up with a situation where people are barging into your office saying, where, where on earth have you been? Same thing goes for FaceTime. You can choose where to receive FaceTime messages and where to associate it with, whether it be your email address or your phone number. So when someone tries to FaceTime you, if it's still connected to your iPad or your computer, if you use a Mac computer, they're gonna try to ring, 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 and they're just not gonna get you. Whereas if it's your phone number, they're gonna see right away that you're just not available in FaceTime. So what do we do? Let's take you over to my Mac computer and let's show you the first couple steps that I did to at least combat this issue or at least try to combat this issue. So we're here on my Mac and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch the Messages app. Now you can see here in my Messages app, I've got a bunch of strings, a bunch of conversations going with people. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my Preferences and Messages here. And we're gonna see right here in iMessage, enable this account, enable messages in the cloud. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and it shows my Apple ID and where you can be reached for messages. So I'm going to disable this account. So right now I've disabled this account for iMessage. And this way, if someone tries to iMessage me, they're just not going to get me. Now you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing on an iPad. So if you've got an iPad here and you've got iMessage set up on your iPad, 
then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your settings on your iPad. You're going to want to go all the way down to messages and you're going to want to make sure that you're either signed out or you're not connected to messages. Same thing with FaceTime. Make sure you're signed out of FaceTime or you're not connected to the FaceTime server. Okay, so you've signed out of iMessage and FaceTime on your iPad and any other iOS devices that may be linked to your iTunes or your iCloud account. This will make sure that if anybody tries to contact you on those methods, you will not be reachable. Awesome. Now, how on earth do you stay in touch with people? See, the benefit of iMessage is that you can stay in touch with people, anybody with an iOS device, without worrying about things like long distance charges. I've got family in France. I've got family in Israel. I've got Mitchell in California. I've got people all over the world. And with iMessage, I can just stay in touch with these people. I never have to worry about paying for long distance, et cetera, et cetera. I can even do FaceTime audio calls. So you gotta find some kind of alternative. There's Skype from Microsoft, which people have been using for many, many years. Google has their own version of their messaging app. I think it's Allo or Duo. I haven't really dove into that yet. Um, but people on iOS devices can download that as well. Well, I happen to like WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a great third-party messaging tool. It's been around for a long time. I think it's actually owned by Facebook now. We won't hold that against them just yet. But it does, just like iMessage, allow you to speak digitally and encrypted to different friends. You can have group conversations. You can send videos. You can even initiate video calls. So that is my go-to alternative to iMessage and FaceTime. The other thing I try to do is say, hey, maybe I could set up an autoresponder for my iMessages. Unfortunately, there's just no way to set up an autoresponder for iMessages that'll tell people, hey, I'm not here here, go find me on WhatsApp. So I just sent out a blast to a bunch of my friends that I stay in touch with often. And I say, hey guys, I'm not using an iPhone anymore. I'm not using an iOS device anymore. Please shoot me a message uh, by text or find me on WhatsApp, which is really, really cool. So that's how I got over this little hurdle of iMessage and WhatsApp. My kids have yet to try to FaceTime me while I'm away. So we haven't really got into that whole sentimental element of things just yet, but we'll battle that when the time comes. I promise you that. Now, another quick tip I wanted to let you know just before I let you go. I was kind of confused with the whole launcher and, and application drawer and everything on the Android device and how it worked. I finally got things working, but I was trying to get the gestures that I was used to on my iPhone 10. And the iPhone 10 doesn't have the button. So in order to go home, you swipe up from the bottom, you can swipe up left and right to kind of get rid of apps or cycle through apps that are running or flick them away at the top. You can actually do that. And one of the things that are really, really handy, especially on any Android device, is when you, when you go to the settings screen is on the top there, you've got that search bar and just type gestures, you know, type anything that you could possibly think of. Um, and, and it shows you exactly what kind of gestures you can use. You can have three buttons on the bottom. If you want to have the three buttons on the bottom, you can have uh, just gestures in the entire operating system, or you can even have a navigation dock, which is really cool. I chose to go for the gestures. This way I can do things like swipe up to go home. I can also swipe up and go between apps and get rid of them just by flicking them up. Very iOS friendly and very much what I'm accustomed to. So these small little tweaks in terms of iMessage, FaceTime, and getting to know the themes and the launcher have made this struggle a little bit less painful than I expected it to be. And it took just a little bit of time to not say, ah, oh, screw this, I'm going back to my iPhone, and actually stop for a second and say, there's gotta be a way to do this on Android, because everybody says Android is superior, so there's gotta be a way to do it, right? Well, you, when you actually dig down into the operating system, you can see that there are ways to mimic everything that we've become accustomed to on iOS devices. So thank you again for joining me on this journey. Again, iMessage FaceTime, just turn those off on all your devices and you will guarantee that your friends who are trying to find you will at least not get lost in this giant black hole of the internet and hopefully be able to find you and not get phone calls like I had at the beginning of this or people barging into your office. Thank you for the comments. Please leave some more comments below. Any questions, any feedback is always appreciated. It helps me get through this process and hopefully helps you get through this process just like I've been trying to right now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.